Hi there and welcome to another midweek memo, this time with a slight difference. As you can see we're not quite in Croydon this afternoon, uh, we're here on our staff retreat together just south of Lowestoft on the east coast uh, of the United Kingdom and uh, coming down to the sea here inevitably made me think back to those verses in Mark's Gospel that we were sharing uh, on Sunday. Uh, do you remember Jesus goes down to the shores of Lake Galilee and he calls out to the fishermen on the sea, come follow me and they join him. At the weekend we were considering how this picture of following Jesus is such a useful and such a helpful one for us when we're thinking what does it mean to be a Christian? To be a Christian is to follow Jesus. Now one point that I didn't make at the weekend, uh, I decided to run out of time, was to say that following Jesus, thinking of being a Christian as following Jesus, helps us to see this. It helps us to see that being a Christian is an ongoing thing. You know, following Jesus. Wherever he goes, we go. What does it mean to be a Christian? It means to keep going wherever he goes. I guess sometimes that's really helpful to remind ourselves of that, isn't it? Because Becoming a Christian can feel like a, just a one-off thing, you know, it's a badge. Something just happens to you and then you put that away, forget about that and then do something else with your life. Now you're a Christian. But actually much better is to think of being a Christian as an ongoing thing. Always going on following Jesus, going where he goes, including some of the costly places that it took him and that it will take us. I do hope you've been appreciating these times of Mark's Gospel. It's been a real privilege to be looking at them myself and to be able to share them with you. A few more notices from this week. Uh, the first thing to say is we had a great second session of Discipleship Explored at the weekend. I think the group dynamics are really beginning to take shape and we're able to real, get real depth in those conversations. Wonderful looking at that next section of the letter of Paul to the Philippians. The second thing to say is uh, Christianity Explored uh, has got underway and has made a great start. Thank you for all those who are praying for that and for those coming on to that course. Fantastic opportunity to really discover what the Christian faith means for us today, particularly for those who know little or have little background. And the third thing to say is uh, that we had a great home group leaders meeting on Sunday. Thank you to the home group leaders who were on that. It was wonderful to hear all the work that's going on in those really important ministries. And I just want to emphasize how important that is going to be, not least particularly under coronavirus, that we have these small groups that we're involved in, which is a chance for us to keep going with the relationships that are so important in our Christian life, even when actually coronavirus is making that much harder to happen on the bigger scale as in church on a Sunday. We've come in from the cold. It's a bit easier to do an interview indoors. And I've got with me Claire Fillingham, who's our Young Families Ministry Coordinator. And this is a chance, really, just like last week, to explore a little bit of the life of the church, and particularly uh, a ministry that is important to so many of us. And so, Claire, thanks for coming in uh, and being prepared to chat through a little bit what your role means. Claire uh, looks up after specifically families with kids at sort of five and below, so she's involved in Messy Church. And uh, she's been telling me how she has really got a, a special role with the, with, the, with the adults as much as the kids in bringing them into the church family and making them feel a part of the church family. And that also enables the kids then to be involved. Now, there is so much that Claire brings. One of the things that I've been realising is that Claire brings a special focus on community that starts with her ministry area, but that feeds out into the whole of church life. And so, Claire, I thought it'd be lovely for you to share with us today really what you shared with the staff team the other day, I, I asked you, what does your ministry look like when it's going well? And I think it's great to hear because it's not just your ministry, it's actually the whole of church. So tell us. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that my ministry is going well when there is a great fluidity where we see lots of people in lots of different situations. So, for example, I can see a mum... Um, on the street outside St Peter's and say hello to her and connect with her and then later on that day she can bring her children to Messy Church for example and at the same time she'll bring a cake because she knows that one of the things that we like to do is to share the love and she is part of our community enough to do that and then I might see her husband on the Saturday at Saturdads 
and um, maybe catch them midweek at uh, toddlers as well. So there's a kind of overarching theme where they where they come to lots of different things within our community. Uh, another way that I think it, it works well is when we can get the whole community of mums who um, have been through childbirth themselves in the first few weeks with um, children and they have been blessed by us in the past by having been provided with meals for a couple of weeks and they have willingly and happily thrown themselves into cooking for another member of um, the community and what's really special is when actually these mums are not the mums that come to church on a Sunday but are the mums that have been blessed by coming to messy church or have been bumps and babies mums and they've seen the community and the way that it works and they've been thrilled to be a part of it um I think that my 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 job is at its best when I'm able to see a need and actually be able to do something about it so for example our caterpillars group uh came out of a situation where one of the mums was um in tears at toddlers having been a bumps and babies mum and just saying my child is not developing in the way that uh, all these other children are and I don't feel um, happy and comfortable coming here anymore because I feel uh, that, that my life journey is different to everybody else's and my um, that people are judging me and my child so I think the biggest blessing in my recent few years has been able to to set up a group for, the, for children with additional needs with um, yeah that's been really special they're just a few few ideas. L- lovely snippets. And I really encourage you, if you don't know Claire well, get to know her and get, get her going on this because she's got a wonderful vision of how our community can work in church. Now, Claire, we want to be praying for your ministry. We'll be praying for you. Can you give us just a sense of what, what are the things that we can be praying for, for your, from where you are in, in church life? Well, at the moment, in these COVID times, none of the things that... I've done in the past are happening in the way that I would like them to mm. but that doesn't mean that they're not growing so we've already now got a new bumps and babies group that's tiny but it, and it's for pre-crawling babies but that's in, they're new mums coming in who have not been um, part of our community before so there's always going to be uh, little places where things can bud and grow and so I would pray for us to be able to take whatever opportunities we can in this funny time and um, make good use of them that'd be one thing and um, one of the, the, the blessings, I think, is the fact that we can do things in a slightly different way. So our rock TV at the moment for the, for the youth, for the kids is wonderful. But we're also able to include the Messy Church family as well, which is quite a, a wonderful opportunity to draw them in um, a bit closer. So pray for some new initiatives and creative ideas to cope with COVID. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Great. Claire, thank you so much for being prepared to share that with us and do be praying for Claire and our ministry together. And the last thing to say, finally, uh, as uh, you see the East Coast uh, receding away from me, is that this Sunday, as we shared last week, is going to be a Harvest Sunday. We're going to be celebrating uh, and giving thanks to the Lord for his provision for us in this year. Great for us in the midst of an urban environment to remind ourselves that even all the good things that fill our shelves come from the Lord and through his hands, through the fields and the farmers and all the other things that bring his provision to us. So please do join us for that online or in person and don't miss the opportunities both to give to the food bank uh, and to give more broadly to those in need around the world. We've got an appeal going for Embrace Middle East, a fantastic opportunity Uh, to support Christians and others affected, particularly at this difficult time uh, in the Middle East. Thanks so much. See you soon.